Hello, I'm Brandi Searcy, a pharmaceutical research scientist. I am here today to talk with you about chronic UTI. This applies also if you have interstitial cystitis, aka painful bladder syndrome, aka overactive bladder. So welcome. What we're going to talk about today is my, I'm going to give you a little bit of background about myself, why I'm so passionate about this, and then we're going to launch into the three big things that is going to get you immediately, immediate relief from urinary urgency from other symptoms of chronic UTI or IC. Now, my own journey, a little bit about, you know, me. When I stopped hormonal birth control, I experienced something that I did not think was real, and that is post-pill syndrome. So all of a sudden, within about two weeks of discontinuing hormonal birth control, I was struggling with migraines, fatigue, weight gain, and absolutely worst of all, UTI symptoms. At the very beginning, uh, those... Pardon me. Just sec. All right. At the very beginning, uh, it started out. I I did what any person would do: go to the walk-in clinic, have my urine tested. Those standard urine cultures came back positive. I'd sit through the lecture on proper feminine hygiene. You know, trying my best to keep my mouth shut and not tell the nurse that hey, I am in my forties. This is the first time that I've ever had a UTI, maybe it's not hygiene. This repeated itself for a while. So walk in, have, have symptoms of UTI. This for me exhibited with, and you'll probably recognize these, urinary urgency, which was the worst, burning while peeing, which was not great, cloudy urine and weird smelling pee. Okay, go into the walk-in clinic, take, the standard urine culture is positive, walk out with an antibiotic, get some relief while on antibiotics, only to have a relapse when that round of antibiotics ended and repeat the same cycle over and over and over again until the standard urine cultures came back negative. And I was still having symptoms. At that point, I fell down a rabbit hole. I actually learned about a lady named Ruth Chris. She is a nurse practitioner. She's now retired. However, she still works with a network of mid-levels and doctors throughout the country on advanced testing to test for quote-unquote embedded infections or micro-infections. And a lot of times this is kind of where it lead, like where the path leads for women. And so then, you know, inevitably we wind up on longer and longer courses of antibiotics. And this was the path I was headed down. What happened was the practitioner I was seeing handed me a prescription for a 28 day supply of an antibiotic so powerful, I was sure I'd wind up dead before I was done with it. And in that moment, I finally listened to intuition. You see the whole time that I'd been struggling with chronic UTI symptoms, I felt like there was something going on with my metabolism. That weird smelling pee that I mentioned as one of my symptoms, to me, that smelled like acetone. So I, once again, I am a pharmaceutical research scientist. I'm very aware of what different solvents smell like. Acetone, now this is kind of like fingernail polish remover back in the day. You know, nowadays it's, ethyl, it's typically ethyl acetate or something else, but back in the day, it was acetone. And acid, and I... Like I say, I, I've been, it's, I've worked around it, uh, worked around a lot of organic solvents. That's one of them. To me, it had that whiff of acetone. Acetone is a ketone. So with every single healthcare provider I saw over the course of 18 months, I mentioned that I felt like I had something going on with insulin. Like I had a problem with insulin resistance and it felt like I was passing ketones. And I mentioned that to them and they would always point back to, it's not showing up in your urine. It's not showing up in your blood test. But in this moment, when this particular practitioner handed me that 28 day supply of that powerful antibiotic, and I listened to intuition, I decided 
that I was going to get to the root of the problem. I was like, I'm going to finally actually unfetter myself, stop allowing myself to be medically gaslit and figure this out on my own. And the universe <laughs> opened the gates and was like, okay, finally, 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 now that you're here, here's the information that you need. Within one week of making uh, you know, that decision that I was going to figure this out on my own, I had a menstrual cycle consistent with PCOS. Now I am going somewhere with this. PCOS stands for polycystic ovarian syndrome. It, a characteristic cycle is it takes a really long time for you to ovulate. And in this cycle, I was struggling to ovulate. And uh, I test my hormone levels, my urinary hormone levels of estrogen and progesterone daily at home. This was actually how I was avoiding pregnancy when I stopped hormonal birth control. And yeah, this particular cycle for the first time was consistent with PCOS. Now, PCOS has several root causes. Insulin resistance is one of them. <laughs> I knew that there was something to it. And so what I did was that was enough for me. I made changes to my diet and my lifestyle. I, I'm going to share with you a little bit about what those are when we get into the three big things. I made changes to my diet and my lifestyle to support my body returning to a state of insulin sensitivity. And it was it felt like an overnight relief. It was seriously that dramatic. All of a sudden the urinary urgency started to fall away. The burning while I was peeing started to fall away. The cloudy urine cleared up and the, uh, the weird smelling pee clean cleared up. And I enjoyed this state of UTI relief for about eight months. And this was the longest I'd been UTI free, uh, you know, since I'd stopped hormonal birth control. Then what happened about eight months into it, um, I woke up one morning and that urinary urgency was back. And I like, I freaked out because like during the previous eight months, I spent a lot of time with my head down in the literature, pulling together why insulin resistance would lead to chronic UTI, why insulin resistance would cause urinary urgency and symptoms consistent with UTI. And, and again, once again, even I see, um, and I'd also started writing a lot about that connection. I started writing for the online journal hormones matter. I had had women reaching out to me from all over the country saying that they were getting relief because They'd started making shifts in their diet and lifestyle to support insulin sensitivity, and it was relieving their chronic UTI symptoms. And so I was over the moon. And then here I am waking up one morning going, what am I missing? Like, what is going on? And, you know, is this really, is this really a relapse? And so what I did was think back to the day before and go through everything I did the day before to figure out what triggered that. And what it was, is I had taken the supplement DIM. So DIM is diendolyl methane. If you, it is what, like, it's quite popular right now because it's commonly recommended for women who have estrogen dominance as a way to pull that, you know, quote unquote, pull that excess estrogen out of the body or reduce the body's ability to make the quote unquote bad forms of estrogen. Now, the thing with diendolyl methane, and I realize that's a quite long name, is it is a naturally occurring compound in many cruciferous vegetables like Brussels sprouts, like broccoli, like cauliflower and cabbage and kale and bok choy. Um, and when you take it in a pill form, when you take it as a supplement, it is highly concentrated. So you're getting way more of it than you would by eating any of those foods on their own. The thing with DIM is it is goitrogenic, which means it actually um, 
this is this ties into thyroid function. <laughs> okay, just so you know. Um, so the thyroid requires iodine in order to make thyroid hormone, in order to do its job, it requires iodine. Goitrogenic compounds prevent iodine from binding to the iodine receptors in the thyroid gland. So they suppress your body's ability to make thyroid hormone. Now I have an autoimmune thyroid condition. I have Hashimoto's thyroiditis. So what this did in this, in this moment was made me realize that it's not enough to focus solely on insulin resistance. We've got to look at insulin. Res we've got to look at insulin and thyroid. And then what I figured out is I continued to pull these pieces together is that actually it's a, it's three hormones. It's the hormones that make you tick thyroid, insulin, and cortisol. And all three of these, balance of all three of these is necessary for healthy metabolism, which at the end of the day, if you are struggling with symptoms of UTI or IC, if you're struggling with urinary urgency, burning while peeing, cloudy urine, or that weird smelling pee, it points to metabolic dysregulation. It points to an imbalance in thyroid insulin cortisol or points to the fact that you are on a super strict keto diet and you need to get off of it. So now let's talk about how do you support thyroid insulin cortisol? And it's particularly here, I'm actually going to focus just on supporting thyroid and insulin because these three things are the things that I've found most helpful for most women who are struggling with chronic UTI and IC and getting past those symptoms. And so we are going to avoid the things that make you sad. Now, what are the things that make you sad? They are sugar, alcohol, and dim. So sugar, whenever you eat simple uh, carbohydrates, so think donuts or bagels, like white bread, those are broken down very quickly. And when you eat, a lot of times when you're eating them by themselves, so you're eating a carb rich meal and it's simple carbs, uh, once again, like a bagel or like a donut, um, those are broken down very fast in the body. And those are broken down into glucose, AKA sugar, AKA blood sugar. And when you have these large spikes in blood sugar levels, it supports an insulin resistant state because what happens whenever your blood sugar spikes, that prompts um, your pancreas to release insulin. And when you have a large surge in blood sugar, that prompts a large release of insulin. And so it continues to perpetuate this insulin resistant state that you're already in. And so it's really important to reduce sugar as much as possible. And when you eat sugar to actually eat like other macros with it. And what do I mean by macros? Macros are protein, fat, and carbs. Like that's the three category of macros. So you want to eat a balanced meal that includes all of those and definitely like steer clear as much as possible of um, just high glycemic index foods. For me, switching up breakfast. So I am a fruit yogurt and granola girl in the morning and just making the transition from vanilla yogurt that always contains added sugar to a plain yogurt with no added sugar helped tremendously and incorporating uh, mint tea throughout the day. Now, thing two, alcohol. Alcohol actually suppresses the body's ability to release glucose in between meals. Whenever you, we, we do not eat 24 hours a day and, but every single cell in the body requires energy 
every second of every day. So in between meals, what's happening is your body's able to release stored glucose because glucose really is the body's preferred energy source. There are certain cells in the body, most notably red blood cells that cannot use alternative energy sources. They cannot use proteins for energy. They cannot use um, fats for energy. They rely solely on glucose. And so for that reason, like we need to be able to release glucose on demand throughout the day and throughout the night. And alcohol suppresses the body's ability to do that. It suppresses a process known as gluconeogenesis. So that's all I'm going to say about that. Cut out alcohol completely. And then DIM, I already mentioned that like me taking one capsule of DIM in the evening caused a return of UTI symptoms. And the reason why I was taking it is once again, monitoring my cycle. I'd seen high estrogen during my luteal phase. Well, that high estrogen was actually due to cortisol dysregulation, <laughs> not to, um, you know, not to anything else. So focusing on Getting my cortisol realigned helped to bring that estrogen back down. Now, these, once again, these are the three biggest things that I've seen help most women. I also offer a 14 day intensive that is intended to be the last thing you ever need to break free of chronic UTI symptoms for life. The information on that is below. It is called the UTI Freedom Formula. The link to begin when you are ready, like right now, is right below. As soon as you enroll in that program, you you receive in uh, email a workbook that has all of the information you need, all of the uh, vitamins, minerals, and nutrients you will need to support you in breaking free of this vicious UTI cycle. Once again, my firm belief is that whether it's UTIs or IC, they are one and the same. They are both metabolic dysregulation. They are both symptoms of metabolic dysregulation, nothing more. Now I will say if you actually have a UTI and it is a complex UTI, meaning that it has spread to the upper urinary tract. So here we're talking the ureters. So the lower urinary tract is the bladder and the urethra. That's, you know, how you pee, how the pee exits your body. Above the bladder are two urethra, ure ureters, and then the kidneys above that. Whenever a bladder infection or UTI infection spreads to the upper urinary tract, that is a medical emergency. And so this is not for you if you are dealing with a UTI of the upper uh, urinary tract. And then the other thing is if a UTI has gone systemic, that is also a medical emergency. So this is not for you. This is for you when those standard urine cultures start coming back negative. This is for you when you are caught in that vicious cycle, like early on where the standard urine cultures are still coming back positive. But you know good and well that once you finish this round of antibiotics, you're going to see a reemergence of symptoms. This is for you. Um, when you're chasing embedded infections, so when you're sending your pee off to a lab to have them do PCR testing and replicate the bacteria in it and waiting for that to come back, like those embedded micro infections, this is for you. Once again, when you have interstitial cystitis, this is for you. The UTI Freedom Formula includes 14 daily emails that give you a daily action step and insight, more insight into how your body actually works and how to restore that metabolic function in order to break free of these symptoms. Once the 14 days is complete, well, okay, on day seven of that, you get an opportunity to meet, to schedule a one-on-one -on -one meeting with me to talk about anything that is still going on, because by day seven, I fully expect you to be well on your way to full relief from these UTI, from these UTI symptoms. And then by day 14, to be pretty much completely free of all of the symptoms. Um, 
so day seven is your first opportunity to book your one-on-one -on -one call with me. Day 14 is the second opportunity to do that same thing. And then what you start receiving on day 14 is the entire thing represented again with videos, just like we're talking here. The reason why I arranged it this way is to lower any barrier, any resistance, make it as easy as possible. Because quite frankly, sometimes like I know I'm, I'm this way. If I see, oh, I've got a seven minute video to watch. It's like, I don't have, I'm not going to watch it, but you give me an email that's got the chunks of what I need to do. And I'm going to follow that. And then your workbook also has that information in it. So it's super readily available. Um, even from the day that you enroll, you've got access like to the whole program basically in that workbook. And then those 14 daily emails just guide you through it. So once again, the information on that is below. It's called the UTI Freedom Formula. Um, and you are able to start right now.